Hello everyone, welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. And before we begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is always such a joy to come every single day and sit before you and your Word, knowing that you desire for us to know about you and your Son Jesus and your ways. Today as we study once again this book of Esther, I pray that you will open our minds and hearts to the truths that your Holy Spirit wants to teach us. And Lord, may we bless you with our lives as you give us the power to live according to your perfect ways, so that it might be pleasing in your eyes. And we'll give you thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is Haman's Wife and Wise Men's Advice. And it's taken from the book of Esther, chapter 6 and verse 13. Haman has been embarrassed beyond measure because he has been forced to lead his enemy Mordecai through the street of the city of Sushan while crying out, Thus shall be done to he in whom the king delights. Mordecai returned to his original place at the king's gate, but Haman covered his head and mourned all the way to his house. After telling his friends and wife of his terrible troubles in chapter 6 and verse 13 of the book of Esther, we see his wife and his wise men's reaction to his plight. We read, And Haman told Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom you have begun to fall, you shall not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. Our verse begins, And Haman told Zeresh his wife and all his friends everything that had befallen him. Can we imagine poor old Haman snibbling and whining as he told his wife and friends about his trouble? He more than likely dramatized every detail of how horrible it was and that he had the tables turned on him. If we think about it long enough, we will see this embittered display by Haman and imagine the reactions of those listening to him. The verse goes on to say, Then said his wise men and Zeresh his wife unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews. Isn't it interesting to note that both Haman's wife and wise friends came to the same conclusion. They both recognized that if Mordecai was a Jew, it would have special significance. Misery loves company, and it's quite certain that Haman's wife and wise friends were aligning with his misery. The verse goes on to say, Before whom you have begun to fall, you shall not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. Almost prophetically, Haman's wife and wise men knew there was something different about Mordecai. As if they were giving him a warning, they said, You shall not prevail against him. As though there was some sort of intuition about the circumstances with Mordecai, those who were closest to Haman gave him warning. Little did they know how accurate they were at the time. Whining and complaining is natural for most people who do not get their way. We have looked at an extreme measure of it. And the interesting part of this is to keep in mind that God is overseeing all of it. Although Th Haman thought his whines and complaints might solicit comfort to him, we shall soon see that it did not. Perhaps as we ponder this passage today, we will examine our own lives in the area of whining and complaining. Have we shown such dissatisfaction with God and his direction for our lives that we have resorted to these measures like Haman did? May the Lord lead us, convict us, and help us to alter ourselves if we find ourselves in Haman's shoes. Next time, we will look at Haman's wife and wise men's friendly conclusion and final conclusion uh, to their advice. So read ahead, and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word. In Jesus' name.